of the 15 million babies born too early globally, nearly 7% will die from complications of prematurity. In Uganda during the financial year 2019-2020, 3% of the total births were preterm. Complications of prematurity accounted for 14% of the reviewed newborn deaths. It is this trajectory that the East Africa Preterm Birth Initiative, also known as PTBI East Africa, aims to change. It's a unique project which I think will leave a mark because at the PTBI approach of looking at the skills of the people, but also very important to look at the data, the strengthening of the data, because we need to document to see are we improving, how do we know that we are there. PTBI is a multi-year research partnership comprising University of California, San Francisco, Macquarie University in Uganda, Kenya Medical Research Institute, Kemri, University of Rwanda, and Rwandan Biomedical Center. The consortium envisions a world where all babies and mothers survive and thrive. We set out to decrease the burden of preterm birth in the geographies where we had selected to work. And it became pretty clear um, when we started engaging with stakeholders and governments that the priority was really around the period of birth, the intrapartum and the immediate newborn care right after those small and tiny babies are born. The study was launched in October 2015 in Kenya and Uganda in partnership with research partners at the Kenya Medical Research Institute and Makere University, respectively. In Uganda, the study sites include Jinja Regional Referral Hospital, Iganga Hospital, Kamali General Hospital, Wijiri Hospital, St. Francis Hospital, Buluba, and Kamali Mission Hospital. This was done in Western Kenya, in Migori County, and in Eastern Uganda, in Busoga, at facilities that provide 24-hour maternity care with at least 200 births per year. The study assessed outcomes of low birth weight and preterm babies. Eligible facilities were pair matched and randomly assigned a one-to-one -one ratio into either the intervention group or the control group. All facilities received maternity register data strengthening and a modified World Health Organization safe childbirth checklist. The maternity registers had lots of gaps in terms of the gestational ages of the babies or the weights of the babies or even documenting when these small babies are being born. So we started by just counting the problem and believing the numbers that were coming out of the facilities. Then on that we had to figure out what were some of the ways that we could help build the capacity and we added the Safe Childbirth Checklist, which provides sort of a job aid and some helpful tips when you have women that may be at risk for preterm birth, what they can and should be doing. Facilities in the intervention group additionally received provider mentoring using Pronto simulation and team training. Pronto is an acronym for an Italian word, but in English it translates to emergency obstetric and newborn care. So we are basically training our health workers, the clinicians, doctors and midwives on management of emergencies in both the mother and the newborn baby. So our, our content has been mostly managing postpartum hemorrhage, that's in the mother, managing a mother who comes in with eclampsia, managing a mother who comes in with an infection, managing a mother who comes in with bleeding in labor, and also management of a preterm baby. So we use um, simulation method. We simulate like a real life scenario. We have um, a patient actress who is acting as a mother, and then we have real health workers taking care of this mother. So they have like a case scenario and they actually deliver a baby and if they need to resuscitate this baby, they actually resuscitate the baby, they actually give drugs. And if there are mistakes that happen, we allow for those mistakes to occur so that we can then discuss them. In essence, we want the health workers to be able to work better as a team and to also reduce the errors that usually occur for the safety of the patient. 
Similarly, facilities in the intervention group had quality improvement circles. Okay. So depending on where we are, hmm, can we be in position to? Uh, we are able to come up with documentation journals and these documentation journals were easy to tell where we were doing well or where we were not doing well and then we would have to come up with interventions for improvement. All these hospitals now have neonatal care units and as I speak, about two years after the project ended, these neonatal care units have even become stronger. We have six health centers that now have neonatal care units and these have a lot of benefits for communities because then care is coming closer to them. I usually tell people I wish I was trained like this because our training was we sit in class and we are lectured and then you're supposed to sort of cram these things and reciprocate them. The biggest difference between this kind of mentorship is that we have people, we have people actually participating. We have most of the times the answers come from the people so most of our Mentorship is about having people do and do and do and repeat, 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 so that things eventually stick. Live born or fresh stillborn babies who weighed between 1,000 grams and 2,500 grams or less than 3,000 grams with a recorded gestational age of less than 37 weeks were included in the analysis. Data from maternal registers for maternal and birth outcomes was abstracted. Follow-up was done by phone or in person to identify the status of the infant at 28 days. We found that in facilities where they received none of this packet, or not, particularly not the checklist and the QI and the Pronto, there was about 23% of those preterm babies that were either stillbirth or not alive at 28 days. And if, the, if we then looked at the intervention facilities or those that got the full packet, there were only 15% that were stillbirth or died. So that, that kind of translates into significant lives saved and babies that are actually become fruitful parts of their families at home. Uh, this project has, has built what we call champions. The midwives, the nurses, the doctors have formed a WhatsApp group where they communicate about the care they are providing. And these champions are going to be the actual means through which neonatal care in Uganda will improve. We saved a lot of lives without introducing any new technologies, just by optimizing the personnel, the skills, the confidence of what is existing here in Uganda and Kenya. The simple things that we are doing in the project, like helping the baby to breathe, delivering it a full time better, uh, putting the baby in the chest on what we call kangaroo mother care and being able to feed the baby the, and the, making sure that the whole care is in a clean environment and the baby is kept warm. These are the things that are saving babies. This type of intervention needs to be um, integrated into the system as a whole and supported by government systems. I think all of the components coming together changed and transformed the culture of care for these babies. So that before we began, a midwife delivering a small, tiny, fragile baby would look at that baby and not know what was the right thing to do, would not know whether ethically they were doing more harm than good by trying to save that baby's life. I think that through the course of this project, it became clear immediately that those facility staff and midwives and nurses, the frontline workers taking care of this every day, they now see those tiny babies and they do everything they can. They don't even pause to think about it. They do what they need because they know that it's actually a, they're saving lives rather than potentially causing more harm.